Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming to my talk. In this talk, I'm going to talk about a generalized multi-calibration method, HappyMap. This is a joint work with my wonderful collaborators, Cynthia Duwok and Jun Deng. So machine learning has been widely used in our daily lives, especially in many consequential domains nowadays, uh, including college automation and di disease diagnosis. Typically, a machine learning algorithm only gives us a prediction value. For example, in disease diagnosis, the machine learning algorithm typically gives us a probability of, say, a patient getting certain disease, given some characteristics of this patient. Recently, people are not only interested in those prediction values, but they are also interested in the uncertain quantification. So in this talk, we are going to um, introduce a general framework that can give us a fair and reliable uncertainty quantification in machine learning predictions. So talking about the uncertainty quantification, a state-of-art method is called conformal prediction, which I'm going to introduce below. And so, uh, conformal prediction is a post-processing algorithm. So suppose we have an input x, which is a covariate vector. Typically, a machine learning algorithm will only give us a value denoted by f hat. The conformal prediction want to, wants to do one step further to construct an interval called c hat. Okay, this is a post-processing step. This c hat is constructed based on the IID training samples x, i, y, i. And the C hat needs to satisfy the following inequality. Basically, it's saying that given a new data point, x nu, y nu, drawn from the same training distribution, then the coverage probability of, say, the y nu is included in hat C of x nu should be quite close to 1 minus delta. Here, this alpha is quite small and uh, typically is called the tolerance level. Okay, this is a traditional uh, conformal prediction framework. However, this framework has two uh, potential issues. One is distribution shift, and another is algorithmic fairness, which we are going to introduce below. So first of all, the traditional conformal prediction takes the probability over the distribution that is the same as the training distribution. Okay. Uh, in many applications, the test distribution D test might be quite different from the training distribution D chain. So in this talk, we will consider the following assumption called the covariate shift assumption, which is commonly used in the transfer learning literature. Basically, this assumption assumes that the marginal distribution of X are different on the training and the test domains. On the other hand, the conditional distribution of y given x are the same. Okay. So we want to guarantee the coverage validity under this distribution shift. If now the x nu y nu is taken from the new test distribution, how can we guarantee that the coverage probability is still quite close to one minus delta? So this is our first problem. There are some prior works considered this scenario. However, um, they require the knowledge of the following density ratio of the marginal distribution of x. Okay. Typically, this, is, this density ratio is unknown. And in some extreme case, say we don't have any data from the test distribution, then there's no way to even estimate this density ratio. So the question still remains, how can we guarantee this coverage in a setting that the, the test distribution might be unknown. It's different and unknown. Okay. As we mentioned, the second issue of the conformal prediction is algorith algorithmic fairness. So the original conformal prediction only guarantees the overall coverage, right? So now suppose 
we are given a collection of protected demographic groups, grouped A. There's a notion called equalized coverage that asks, therefore, all group A in this script A, the conditional coverage needs to, the conditional coverage probability needs to be quite, still be quite close to one minus delta. Okay, so this notion is called equalized coverage, and this is, this characterize the fairness for the uncertainty quantification problem. In the same paper who proposed the equalized coverage notion, they propose a method to construct a, a, an interval C hat that satisfies this notion. However, their method required the knowledge, uh, required the assumption that the script A are disjoint. So basically saying that all the groups in this script A need to be disjoint. This assumption might be too strong in some cases. So for example, uh, if uh, we consider the racial group and gender groups, those two groups are, are potentially uh, overlapping, right? So uh, what if we want the equalized coverage notion hold for those overlapping groups? And moreover, say what if we have infinitely many groups that we want to protect? What can we do in that case? And uh, still there's no method uh, in the literature testifying those notions. So um, in order to address both problems, let's first rewrite the uh, two coverage probabilities. So for the, under the uh, correlative shift setting, the coverage probability can be rewritten, rewritten as the following expectation form. Uh, similarly, for the equalized coverage probability, uh, we can also rewrite this um, formula as in this expectation form. If we compare those two formulas, we would observe some similarity as we show here. So first of all, both formulas include this indicator function term. Secondly, both formulas as a form, say, um, this indicator function multiplied some other functions, okay? Given this similarity, we can then do one step further. We can rewrite the coverage validity under the covariate shift setting in this formula using this superior notion, where we take superior over this density ratio. Basically, it's saying that if the test distribution has this density ratio in the script C, then we can guarantee that the coverage probability under this new test distribution is quite close to one minus delta. Okay. Similarly, we have the, the, the similar interpretation for the equalized coverage notion. Then, given this similarity, okay, we introduce a notion called S happy multi calibration, which uh, has the following expression. If we take, say, this red function C to be the density ratio, and we take the blue function S equal to say one minus delta one minus, one minus this um, indicator function, then we can recover the one-sided version of the uncertainty quantification problem under the covariate shift setting. In our paper, uh, we discussed how to transfer transform this one-sided version to an interval. But in this talk, for the simplicity of presentation, we will skip this. You can check our paper for more details of this transforming. Moreover, if we take, say, this C to be this indicator function, and S to be the same form, then we recover the equalized coverage notion. Okay. So this has happy uh, multi-calibration can be applied to this special settings. In fact, this S hap multi-calibration calibration, calibration notion is very general and it can be used 
to unify many notions considered in the multi-calibration literature. For example, if we take this C to have this indicator function form, where this I bin is some pre-specified bin the intervals. Okay. And if we take this S to, to be F minus Y, then we recover the multi-calibration notion. Moreover, if we take this C to have this indicator function form, then we, we recover the multi-accuracy notion. Furthermore, if we take say this C to be the indicator, the density ratio, and S again to be the F minus Y, then we recover the universal adaptivity um, method uh, recently proposed in a PNAS paper. Um, last but not least, uh, our notion can also be used to recover a lot of other notions in the literature including the low degree multi-calibration, omnipredictors, multi-valid, et cetera. Okay. Um, so uh, first of all, we want to uh, remark that our notion is quite general. Secondly, we also want to note that um, our notion and, and also our result and algorithm are inspired by all those amazing works, those seminal um, prior works. Uh, there are many connections between our notion and those works. Uh, please refer to our paper for a more detailed discussion. Then given the S-happy multi-calibration notion, we propose the following algorithm to achieve that notion. Okay. Because this is a post-processing algorithm that map any input function F0 to a final input Ft that satisfies the happy multi-calibration notion we call this algorithm happy map. It maps an algorithm to satisfy the happy notion. <laughs> so this algorithm is actually quite simple. It's simply a variant of the gradient boosting algorithm. In the central part of this algorithm, we first say found, use the weak learning to find a, a function CT in the script C that violates the happy multi-calibration notion. And then based on the CT, we implement one step of a gradient descent. Okay, so this is a happy map algorithm. Given this happy map algorithm, we have the following result. Given certain iterations, okay, the resulting output F will satisfy uh, the S happy multi-calibration. Okay. Given this result, we now apply this uh, result to the two problems we described above. So the first application is say, the coverage under the covariate shift setting. Suppose now we have a test distribution, okay, it can be unknown. And that test distribution has say, the density, has the marginal distribution P test that where the density ratio is quite close to the script C. The distance between the script C and the density ratio is quite small and upper bounded by beta. If this condition is satisfied, then we can guarantee that the coverage probability under this new test distribution is quite close to one minus delta with tolerance level F plus beta. Okay. So our algorithm can guarantee valid coverage, even if we don't know the test distribution. Okay. Secondly, if we apply the happy map algorithm to the equalized coverage setting, we can get the following result. Okay. So even if we consider the overlapping cases, okay, and moreover, e even if say the script A have infinitely many groups, our happy map algorithm can give us a hat C of X that satisfies this equalized coverage notion. Okay, so this is our second application. Moreover, in our paper, we also give say, the following no harm theorem. Before we introduce the result, let me introduce a few notions. Basically, this theorem uh, describes that given the coverage guarantee, the happy map algorithm also give us a quite good interval 
in terms of the interval length. Okay, so let me introduce a few notation first. Uh, so suppose we use uh, f star delta to denote the delta quantile function of the conditional distribution of y given x. Okay, uh, one can prove that when y given x is symmetric, then the shortest one minus delta prediction interval satisfying equalized coverage will take the form of this C star of x. Okay. Then our no Hahn theorem says that if the C0, the input, okay, if the initialization C0 is quite close to this C star, then the output C hat will have a similar length. Okay, so, so if this C star is quite close to the optimal interval C star, which in this case, the right-hand side will be quite small. And then the result tells us that the, the left-hand side will also be very small, implying that C hat will also be quite close to C star. So this theorem tells us that even if C0 doesn't satisfy the equalized coverage, but after the happy map algorithm, we can always guarantee the C hat to satisfy the equalized coverage. Meanwhile, if C hat is close to C star, then the C hat will also be quite close to C star. It will not destroy the interval length it doesn't sacrifice the interval length to guarantee equalized coverage. Okay, so this is what the no Hahn theorem tells us. Because our happy map algorithm is quite, is a quite a general framework, so in our paper, in addition to the conformal prediction under the distribution shift and the equalized coverage setting, we also apply this framework to more problems including accuracy transfer and also missing data analysis. So if you are interested, please refer to our paper. Now let me conclude this talk with some discussions. Uh, so first of all, our happy map framework is used for prediction functions. It's used to post-process prediction functions. Nowadays in transfer learning literature, the deep learning community uh, realized that the representation functions, the multivariate representation functions, sometimes is more useful than the prediction functions. And this idea has been used, say, in the pre-training and the um, fixed feature transfer learning literature. So can, is it possible to combine this happy map framework to this, pre to this representation function learning? This might be an interesting direction. Another problem we want to discuss is say, the complexity of the script C. As we have seen in the uh, uncertainty quantification under the di distribution shift setting, the wider or the bigger the script C is, the more test distributions we can include to guarantee the valid coverage. Right? So the power of C, the larger the C is, the better the coverage probability is. On the other hand, our algorithm running time will depend on the complexity of the C. So the larger C will take longer time to run the algorithm. Can we have a trade-off between this? So this is another interesting question. Okay. So I will stop here and thank you very much for your listening.